Hey Europop! Here's Joe, with your latest Eurovision news. I want to talk about OGAE, which is sort of the official, unofficial fan club, for the Eurovision Song Contest. It was started in Finland, with a French name, and the UK, has the biggest national club. I sometimes find Eurovision a bit confusing, so I guess, it's a perfect fit. Talking of national clubs, over 40 countries, have their own dedicated groups, and even a rest of the world option, for everyone else. The name is an abbreviation for, organization, Jenna Alde Amateurs, De Law O Vision. It's a bit of a mouthful, to be honest, which is why most people, just call it the fan club. Although it's not officially linked to Eurovision, they are regularly supported by the EBU, in the form of ticket allocations, which are offered to members, usually via a ballot. Since 2007, there's been a poll, before each contest, to vote for the winner. Although, they've only matched the eventual result, 6 out of 16 times, and 2 of those were Laureen's wins. I'm not sure, what we can learn from these statistics, but I hope the EBU find them valuable. Probably of more interest to them, are the annual competitions, organized by the OGAE, for their members. First up, the OGAE Song Contest, allows each club to submit a non-Eurovision song, from their country. The UK, are actually doing really well, having won 6 out of the last 13. But with artists like Adele, and Louis Capaldi, it's no surprise. The UK have some outstanding talent, it's just a shame they aren't really clicking with Eurovision anymore. I've not looked into it too much this year, but my prediction might be Per Dam, by Kylie Minogue. I'm not really mega into that contest, as it's not Eurovision based, but it can be a nice way to discover new music. But, the other contest the OGAE organize, I absolutely love. If it didn't exist, I might have invented it myself. It's called, the Second Chance Contest. If you're a bit of a Eurovision superfan, you probably watch quite a few of the national selection shows. I watch loads of them, and maybe I get a bit too into it, if I'm honest. So, each country, that had a national selection show that year, can put forward an artist that took part, but wasn't chosen to represent their country. And, it's been a nice bit of therapy for me. I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder in 2016, when Poland didn't choose Margaret, as their entry. I thought her song, Cool Me Down, was an absolute banger, and might have even given Jamala, a bit of competition. Thankfully, my ranting was calmed down a bit, when it went on to win, the second chance contest. And if I'm honest, I didn't really click with Monoskin's winner from 2021. I preferred a different Mon, Mon you meant, the winner, of the 2021 second chance contest, by Norway's Kano. I'm going to put some links to all these songs, in the description, for you to check out. For this year's second chance contest, there are 23 entries. I'd like to talk about mine, and my daughter's favorites, and also a few more, that might be of interest. First up, is my favorite, and quite surprisingly, it's from a country whose songs, I often just rate as okay. It's Albania, with Evita. A beautiful song, about the birth of the singer's daughter. Sometimes, I don't really understand what's happening with the selection shows, as I thought this song won, but afterwards, the public chose to send Albina and family. Anyway, it's a great song, and my fave. As for my daughter, who picks the winner more often than me, her favorite, is Norway. The singer, Ulrike, was due to take part, in 2020, the cancelled year, and is back again. The song, honestly, is a little bit Disney for my liking, but I'm sure it will do very well, and my daughter absolutely loves it. My second choice, is Will, for Germany, with Hold On. Unfortunately, it sounded a bit boring live, so I can see why Germany chose the flamboyant Lord of the Lost instead. But the studio version is really nice, and well worth a listen. Next up, is my daughter's second choice, Denmark, with Marry Him. It's a little bit safe, 
but it's definitely a grower, and I'm getting quite into it now as well. Let's look at a few more songs worth mentioning. Poland, who disappointed me, with their selection for 2016, might have annoyed a lot of fans again this year. There's been quite a serious allegation of cooking the books, and many people thought, Jan Song Gladiator, should have qualified, instead of Blanca. I'm not really into it myself, but there's a big chance it will get a sympathy, or protest vote, and could well be the winner. And finally, I better give a bit of a nod to Sweden. Melfest, is very popular, and Sweden are doing really well with the OGAE second chance contest. They've won 9 out of the last 20, and could even do the double this year, like they did in 91. That's winning the actual contest, and the second chance contest as well. In fact, their entry, Air, is a great little pop song, and would probably have done quite well, if Laureen hadn't come back. As you can see, I'm quite passionate about the second chance contest, I could probably talk about it all day. I will update you with the results of the contest, later in the year. In the meantime, if you want to get involved, and vote in these alternative competitions, please check out your local group. I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm very happy to recommend them to you, as they do some great things, for Eurovision fans. I'm going to make another video, focusing on the largest OGAE national club, the one based in the UK. So please look forward to that video, coming soon. Anyway, that's about it for this video, I hope you'll join me again. Until then, have fun, and whatever you do, make it pop. pop.